So welcome everyone to this session today on partnerships for performance, lessons learned from, learned from integrating libraries into, into sustainable development goal delivery. I'm really glad you can join us. I apologize about the slightly late start, but I'm happy that we can do this. Um, and I think I'm particularly happy that we're able to cover this as a topic. Um, such a key theme within the 2030 agenda is the importance of partnerships, of the importance of mobilizing all available actors, mobilizing all available strengths in order to deliver on the sustainable development goals. And clearly this is something that is more important than ever with the, the, the due concern that there is about our, the risk of not actually achieving sustainable development goals, the need to leverage available factors, the need to accelerate, to do things differently. And coming from the International Federation of Library Associations, certainly we believe that too often libraries are put in a box, too often libraries are seen in a very narrow way in terms of how they can deliver on societal goals. What hopefully we can do today through conversation is look at examples of, well, a government in particular in the case of Ireland that has thought a lot more broadly, that has actually reflected and looked at, well, all the different ways in which you can form partnerships, you can integrate libraries successfully into sustainable development goal delivery. Ireland's voluntary national view is absolutely stand out. It is exceptional. Um, this is already a good year for the consideration of libraries in voluntary national reviews. We have for the first time 50% of countries doing so, and some really positive examples of seeing their role in changing behaviours, in supporting literacy, obviously, in supporting innovation, in building civic engagement. But I think, as I said, among these, Ireland really does stand out. So it's fantastic to be able to hear today from Niall McLaughlin, who is the Principal Officer for Air Quality European Union at International at the Department of Environment, Climate and Communications within the Irish government. So without further ado, I will hand over to Niall and then I will also then we'll call on Lloyda to provide response. So Niall, over to you. Thanks, Stephen. And I, I hope you can still see my screen. Um, I think you need to share again. Oh, sorry. No, sorry, not sorry. Me. My, my apologies. Just go stop my video for a moment because, it, as I said, I'm still a little glitchy here. Okay, I think I think that should work. That looks good. Thank you. Over to you. Great. And thanks again, uh, Stephen, and good morning, everybody. And uh, thanks very much for, for those kind words, Stephen, at the outset, and for the invitation to participate at uh, this morning's, uh, what I think is a really, really important event. As you said, my name's Niall McLaughlin. I'm the Principal of the Air Quality EU International Climate Policy and Sustainable Development Goals Division in Ireland's Department of Environment, Climate and Communications, which is a, a broad remit, as you can appreciate. But I'm currently in New York with the department's SDG team and we are preparing to present Ireland's second uh, national review at the HLPF. Um, this morning, I'm, I'm going to give an overview of Ireland's whole of government approach to the uh, implementation of the SDGs, the associated national framework and plans, and uh, indeed the leading role that libraries have played in Ireland in embedding the SDGs in communities across uh, the country. So as I said, in Ireland, the whole of government approach has been adopted for implementation of the SDGs, with each minister having a specific responsibility for implementing individual targets related to their own functions. Uh, my department, the Department of Environment, and uh, my division has overall responsibility uh, for promoting the SDGs and overseeing their, their coherent implementation across government, including the development of the national implementation plans and reporting frameworks. So we've got a senior officials group and uh, an interdepartmental working group that support implementation of this whole of government approach. Uh, both play a, a really key role in identifying the priorities, uh, overseeing monitoring progress and ensuring officials from across government departments work together to incorporate the SDGs into their work and stakeholder engagements. Uh, the SDG National Implementation Plan set out the overarching uh, national government's coordination and monitoring framework and uh, the detailed policy approaches to progress individual uh, goals and targets are addressed in relevant national policies as set out in the SDG uh, policy map. So the second national implementation plan for the sustainable goals <clears throat> was published last October. <clears throat> 
excuse me, and instead it was developed in collaboration with all government departments and key stakeholders and uh, based on input from, from two public consultation processes. The stated objective of the plan is to increase Ireland's ambition and strengthen our implementation structures to achieve uh, Agenda 2030 for, for sustainable development. Uh, in Ireland, and I hope this comes across in our VNR, we, we place stakeholder engagement at the heart of our SDG implementation. Uh, in this regard, um, stakeholder forum was established to inform further development of the national framework and it provides a mechanism for stakeholders, small sectors to discuss and workshop really innovative ideas and solutions for achieving uh, the SDGs in Ireland. The most recent uh, meeting of the of the forum took place last April, and that was focused on our 2023 VNR, which, as you can see, is based on the theme of building back better while leaving no one behind. And again, it includes input from the government departments, stakeholder groups, civil society, including a really excellent contribution from our libraries. Uh, so the VNR was submitted to the UN in early June and will be presented at the HLPF by our Minister, uh, Minister Amy Ryan, next week. So recognising and strengthening the role of, of public libraries as, as, as really key stakeholders of Agenda 2030 in Ireland is an important objective of our national implementation plan. There, there's some 330 libraries across the country. They're present in every town, pretty much every city, uh, certainly Irish uh, public libraries. They offer, we, we think, really huge uh, potential as a means to raise awareness uh, of the goals and promote Agenda 2030 at local and uh, community level. Um, the library is a location for information, knowledge and facts as one feature. The library is a really proactive player who, who contribute to concrete actions and changes through initiatives. Uh, facilitation and citizen involvement um, is another. Um, in addition, libraries support many specific aspects of the vision of Agenda 2030, including the concept of universal literacy, inclusivity, and a sense of national ownership of the goals, um, play a really crucial role in that aspect, uh, sorry, in respect of uh, access to information under SDG 16, um, ensuring public access to information is, is also a key component of our, to foster participation and support the principle of, of leave no one behind. And then um, the, the capacity to promote a range of other targets and goals, particularly in respect of, of, of culture, uh, climate literacy, and then um, certainly ICT as well. Oops. Sorry. Um, so, as we said, libraries are, by their very nature, sustainable institutions which play a, a big part in helping to provide knowledge, understanding and resources to our communities. And um, Stuart, ha Stuart Hamilton, the, the head of, of uh, libraries development in Ireland, who I'm sure you all know, uh, uses a wonderful term, uh, the public librarian as the original uh, circular economist. And I think this is really fitting. Um, as the very essence of public libraries is the recycling and, and reusing of sustainable resources. And as I said, this sustainable practice finds practical expression every day in Ireland across the public libraries network. You know, they're freely available to everyone, regardless of their background or their status. And some 800,000 uh, registered members access more than, I think it's 13 million books and, and countless other resources uh, every week. Um, so, my apologies. Building on the work already taking place in individual libraries in respect of the SDGs and, and promoting the uptake and sharing of best practice across uh, national library systems, as I said, it offers huge potential to promote and, and, and localize the goals. Many examples of best practice in promoting the SDGs through the network were identified in, in the development of our second national implementation plan some of which included creation and showcasing of SDG book lists, activities and events to highlight the goals to, public, to the public and, and to schools, uh, promotion of events such as Pride Month, Biodiversity Week, uh, really, really valuable workshops on climate action, uh, going back to the circular economy on fast fashion, sustainability, and building a, a social uh, economy ecosystem. Um, following a public consultation and news, five-year national public library strategy will be launched. I think it's it's next Monday. I received my invitation, but unfortunately, I, I'm going to be here in New York.
Yeah, we've lost your sound for a moment there, Niall. We may need to wait a second for your sound to come back. I apologize, everyone. Give us a second just to, to wait for Niall to be able to bring his sound back. I know that he's live on hotel Wi-Fi. Just while we wait for Niall's sound to come back, um, I think I know, it's it, it, it's to online. Unfortunately, I, I know that that Stuart is on the Stuart is on the call as well. And okay, I think Niall's had sort of dropped off, and I'm sure he'll be back in a minute. But I think Ireland, simply speaking, from the perspective of an international library association like IFLA, Ireland is a, a really interesting example in terms of its ability to look to centralise and to have that central agency that is looking to develop and drive partnerships, develop and drive initiatives to bring together and to celebrate good examples. And the point that Nile was making just there about a lot of this work is already happening. I think we're all aware that the, the, the SDGs, the themes included in the SDGs are not necessarily new. It's important that they feature there. But one of the key ideas is how do you actually, the fact of having the SDGs brings things together effectively. And so it's really exciting what is going on in Ireland in order to encourage that cooperation, really highlight it, draw out those existing positive contributions. Um, Niall, are you? Hi, able Stephen. To that? Excellent. That's fine. I was, I was, I was filling in. Um, Excellent. Uh, great. That's apologies, I think. Okay, I'll just, I'll try, I'll try and, and catch up where, where I left off. Um, that's that's great. Take take your time to get to where you need to be. Your slide 11, we've got to. Okay. Great. So um, I, I, I can't find the button to, 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 to transition, but hopefully you can see that okay still. Um, we, can see, we can see the back end. That, that, it's good enough. <laughs> <laughs> As I was just saying, um, so there's been a public, consult public consultation on a new five year. Uh, National Public Library Strategy, and that's going to be launched uh, next Monday. And as I was saying, I'm particularly excited that this will be the first national strategy to have a specific focus on sustainability and climate action and concrete actions designed to help Ireland um, achieve the goals. I've been asked to identify um, a success story and, and there have been many achievements uh, from our library system um, such as the Grow Forward initiative which encouraged participants to grow their own food from seeds and, and share their growing with others to create a movement or a community of food growers all over, all over Ireland. The Healthy Ireland at your Library programme which supports communities improve their health and well-being through access to a national collection of health related books and other reading materials um, the annual Ireland Reads promotional campaign that focuses on literacy and well-being, and the Little Library Initiative, which has encouraged uh, library usage and the provision of library services to early learning and care settings. But for me, I think uh, our greatest achievement in this space has, has, has been the inclusion and integration of our libraries into our national implementation plan for the Sustainable Development Goals, which makes us one of the few countries, I think, realising the potential of public libraries to achieve the SDGs, tasking our libraries with supporting many specific aspects, which in effect means over the next five years <clears throat> that Ireland's libraries will specifically address 31 SDG targets and contribute to practically um, every goal. Um, going forward then, I hope I have demonstrated, albeit through a truncated presentation, the integral role that libraries in Ireland will play in achieving the 2030 agenda underpinned by our national implementation plan and our national library strategy. Um, but as we all know, as we here constantly this week, um, Agenda 2030 it is a collective journey. No one will reach uh, the destination, if you like, um, until everyone does. When Minister Ryan presents our VNR next week, he'll do so acknowledging that we have much work left to be done and he will recommit us to work nationally and internationally to accelerate Agenda 2030. 
in Ireland, we would certainly welcome the opportunity to work with other member states and exploring ways that they can unlock the potential of their library networks, um, as I believe we're, we're really starting to do uh, in order to implement the SDGs, including this concept of universal literacy, inclusivity uh, and national ownership, and going beyond in terms of access to information for people's development in general and uh, combating digital exclusion, which we're hearing a lot of this week as well. So in that context, we would certainly be delighted to work with colleagues on this call and beyond to initiate these discussions and consider mechanisms that could be utilised or indeed established to ensure uh, that the potential of the libraries to support the achievement of the, SG, of the SDGs uh, is not wasted or neglected, but instead fully uh, utilised. Thank you very much. I, I hope I'm still with you, Stephen. Yes, yes, you, 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 you are. That was fantastic, and I think that that's also such fantastic news that you've got that in the plans going ahead. We're likely to see the role of libraries even more formally integrated into things, and obviously, from our perspective, that 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 brings huge benefits. I think first of all, clearly, it it opens up, it provides that steer to build partnerships and to and to, to make sure that libraries are being the potential of libraries is being taken into account from the beginning. That, that whatever changes are needed in order to realise that potential are in place. But I think also feeling it across the library field as a whole, the fact of this recognition is incredibly empowering. I think the, the, the message that goes out to libraries that they are development partners, partners for development, that they do have this crucial role is a fantastic mobilising factor and contributes to a really powerful change in mindset across the world's two and a half million libraries in terms of how they think about their role and how they see their own contribution to societies. So um, what I might do actually is then hand over, I'd like to ask Lloyd Garcia Fibo, who is an international library consultant with a huge amount of experience of working around the world on libraries and sustainable development goals. And in particular has been doing some fantastic work in the US with the Sustainable Development Goals Working Group within the American Library Association. And I think that the US is a fascinating story. Obviously, what happens at the national level is one thing, but at the state and the local level in particular, there are some really fantastic examples there to draw on of making libraries part of broader strategies. So, Lloyda, over to you to, to, to respond and provide a little bit of the US context. Uh, thank you, Stephen. Can you hear me well? OK, I can now hear you. <laughs> Okay, but it's good if you can hear me. Um, and congratulations to our Irish colleagues. Um, this is just an amazing model to study and to follow into how they were able to um, have this achievement to include libraries in such a prominent way in the VNR. Um, over here, I, I as I was listening to uh, Niel, I identify many areas that um, are kind of like common um, with other librarians and in, in other colleagues in other countries, including Ireland. We are working towards literacy. We are working to address climate crisis. That seems to be a, a common um, theme and goals from libraries as well. And we have prepared different documents. Um, and I thought about sharing that the American Library Association, since I'm going to um, share um, from this perspective from uh, the United States, um, they have um, an initiative called Resilient Communities, Libraries Respond to Climate Change. And it is uh, a pilot program, but it is uh, supporting programming and development of collections and different initiatives to address the climate crisis. And um, that's one thing that I wanted to share. It also takes me to mention that libraries have been contributing to development for centuries. Uh, this is nothing new, um, but we have to make uh, others aware of the work that libraries are doing, right? The value of libraries. And um, another thing I wanted to mention um, is that from the ALA and the American Library Association um, end of things, we um, started to uh, work with um, establishing an UN task force uh, a couple of years ago. And um, this was really instrumental to develop 
a multi-year strategic plan that will help the, the ALA, the American Library Association, work with um, different units that are also library associations. You know, there are different um, um, structures over here, but also with library associations that are not part of ALA and different stakeholders and cities um, and also equip our librarians that are, like Stephen said, in the 50 different states um, to advocate for libraries. We are, we developed uh, bookmarks and develop different charts that help libraries to show and demonstrate their value and what they're doing. There's different projects that were mentioned, um, as they were mentioned by Neil, we, um, through this chart that includes the 17 goals, librarians can um, include these initiatives, perhaps matching them with the, with the goals. And so these charts are being used to go to um, city hall and talk to mayors and different stakeholders. And that's another way of showing how libraries are impacting and furthering development. And so um, currently we um, have um, ended the task force, but we started uh, an association wide. Um, it's coming from the International Relations Committee, but um, is working with the association. And that is the ALA United Nations Subcommittee. And um, we are very happy that during this high level political forum. We have uh, some of the experts and colleagues from the ALA also part of the IFLA delegation and we have collaborated at that in that capacity um, in sort of like advising and, and helping others understand how libraries can also and are contributing to development. Um, I'm going to leave it up to here unless uh, Stephen thinks that we have more time. I can talk for a while. <laughs> Um, as you can see. Um, yes, yeah, Stephen, back to you. But I think that I, I, I fear that Niall's, Niall's connection has dropped, but we should be joined by Matthias Sotomayor pretty shortly from, from the Argentinian Council for the Coordination of Social Policies. So um, I, I guess an interesting question on this, and this comes down to, to I don't know, the theme of, of, of this session as a whole, is these experiences and what seems to work actually in terms of integrating libraries fully into libraries fully into, in, in, into policies and so for example i'm conscious that in in new york's planning there are a number of references to libraries i think los angeles is is, is a particularly interesting example uh, at the state level we see some really positive examples of libraries being brought into connectivity planning into health planning for example in delaware i don't know if there are any examples you might be able to draw on of where that integration where that where that integration into either explicitly or implicitly SDG related strategies, look what that looks like in some of the cases you're aware of. Well, uh, this is an excellent uh, point. During and, and because the high level political forum is also kind of centering in the um, strategies and different measures started during COVID-19 and how the world is moving forward, um, this takes me to mention that during the, in the middle of the of the uh, pandemic, the American Library Association worked with different um, states uh, and also um, with the federal uh, government to advocate for libraries in such a way that um, libraries were beneficiaries of a bill, different bills that were passed by the Senate and the House of Representatives. And a part of that went to really boost the connectivity and uh, internet access of tribal libraries. And uh, we had an event about um, agency, indigenous agency in abundance um, as part of these days of the high level political forum. This was just uh, uh, July 11, just a few days ago. And we had um, indigenous librarians talking about the services the libraries are providing and this serve to the, the populations and the services are provided uh, due to the partnerships 
like you mentioned, and the uh, agency of the um, different groups of librarians working with the American Library Association and also advocating for library, not only, only at the federal level, but as you all know, advocacy is such a process that you need to advocate in your city and your state, and then uh, that uh, amplifies right your, your efforts towards the federal level, at least in this country. And so um, that is, um, a very important area. We need to do more work in that area. We hope to uh, build on the partnerships that we have started and to make that part of policy, which is the important part, right? Uh, the funding and the policy to make things happen and to uh, make this access permanent and the efforts to reach these uh, groups uh, that are at times very isolated. Um, permanent efforts and, you know, to, to kind of like sustain all the, the mechanisms needed to make it happen. Thanks. So making sure I'm unmuted there. So I, I, and I think that's really powerful. And I think there's also, there were so many really positive stories to tell in there about that combination of, of the reach that libraries can have, but also obviously the partnerships that they can actually form in terms of actually being able to bring, in terms of being able to you know, use their own unique strengths, use their own unique capabilities, but actually combine them with com combine them with other actors. And um, could you talk a little bit about the work that you're doing with the SDG task force in order to actually reach out more to governments and to administrations and, and, and make sure at the state level, potentially at the local level, in order to make them in order to help them be more aware of what's possible. I think just to give you some time to think, to give some examples from what we're doing at the global level. Um, and certainly one of the things that we certainly hope comes out of a high level political forum is through the participation of, of, of librarians as delegates, that possibility to actually sit down with people, to stop, to talk, to think, to actually point out that across the sustainable development goals, across the, the, the 17 SDGs and beyond, <laughs> arguably, there's actually, uh, there is this huge potential. And what we have certainly on the IFLA website is a number of, uh, we have what we call the library map of the world, which is a, a tool that we have in place in order to demonstrate stories, to de de demonstrate practical examples. Um, I can also share very quickly a, I'll just make this full screen, but just so you should be able to see this now, this is actually an analysis that we have carried out of the voluntary national reviews that have already been produced this year so far. So, as said already, this has been a, a record year for uh, a record year for the reference, references to libraries in voluntary national reviews. But we've gone through and we've carried out the analysis to look at what share of them are actually referring to libraries under different sustainable development goals. So, where is it? Can we claim? Where is it? Can we say that it, it, it's normal? It's normal to think about libraries in a, a broader way. And so, for example, I suppose, as you would expect, we can see very clearly that SDG4 scores almost, there's almost 70% of, of voluntary national reviews that mention libraries talk about there. But what's really interesting is that we see some very high scores around SDG8, which includes innovation, digital issues, a lot around SDG11, which focuses on strong communities, quite a lot around combating inequalities, SDG10, and also SDG16. But also, there's some really interesting examples, and I think we're talking about there's about 20 VNRs, therefore, that are talking about libraries right now, but even some of those areas where you may not naturally expect so much, so around agriculture and food security, there's references around health, around gender equality, we're seeing references, also around employment, so it's really welcome, it's really fascinating to see this, this breadth, and so I guess coming back to my question earlier, the work that you're doing within the US to convince to actually broaden that perspective of libraries. Yes, that's excellent, uh, Stephen, because um, everyone can contribute from where they are. That's that's very important. Um, but from the um, the ALA uh, uh, United Nations subcommittee now, we are collaborating with different uh, groups, library groups. And one thing that we uh, did recently is that we participated um, with the ALA and the Public Library Association on an event to train librarians on project outcome, which is uh, an excellent tool to measure results. And um, we had members of uh, that are very uh, working with our committee on the UN SDGs speak 
and um, um, relate the SDGs to project outcome. And it was great because um, it will teach them how to measure the results of their programming activities in libraries and how then to have evidence-based results that they can show to different stakeholders. And then um, that's a powerful tool. Um, it's very important, as we know, to show um, the, um, the, the value of libraries and um, to show how libraries are contributing to development and also um, how else they are uh, um, improving for instance, um, education and lifelong learning in the communities um, and working with so many other areas within the uh, 17 goals. And uh, in that sense, we are doing that type of programming and um, it is coming from different units within the association in the state, but um, we are very happy that they are um, calling on us and consulting and working together so we can show how libraries are really impacting development. And um, and that's that's something that I always say to everyone is that we have these amazing tools, but we also can contribute and are already contributed from where we are in our library. So that type of empowerment is very important because we are already doing that. We are impacting the community. So it's very important, you know, that people inform themselves, uh, share that information with other, with the colleagues, and um, of course, obtain the buy-in from your administration and your managers. And then, um, starts to strategize on how to reach these different stakeholders and um, I'm very happy if those in the states uh, connect with me or with ALA because with, there are already many resources we have as I mentioned um, charts that you can download and customize at your library's name and information and use it to show what the library is doing and, and you know share that with your stakeholders your local politicians and other people and then we also even have bookmarks which are a really cool thing people can download them um, maybe bring with you when you're going to meet with these officers and these politicians um, and they show uh, the different um, SDGs and you can add again customize the name of the library and all that and of course we have uh, recordings of webinars that I have mentioned today, including this one with project outcome, which is very interesting because it allows you to um, prepare evidence-based results of your different um, library initiatives. Thank you, and I, I, I like that emphasis as well. And I think it, it, it's a point that I know is felt very much around the world that it's important that the the SDGs provide this this opportunity for, I guess, a, a convergence in some ways. I know that certainly when I talk and when we talk from the IFLA point of view about the, the SDGs, their value as, as I know, obviously a label is very important, but the value as a, a thought framework, a way for providing libraries as an opportunity to think through, well, what are the impacts that we're having on society and, and, and actually look to think about how you measure your impact in that sense. And so the work around project outcome in the US is, is extremely interesting in this respect. But I think also this question of, of vocabulary, what's the sort of language that we're using around the SDGs is, is, is a really, oh, so what's the sort of language that we're using and how can we make sure that we're not missing opportunities simply because we're articulating things that we're saying things in, in different ways. That's going to be a really important one. I think we, we should have Matthias uh, Sotomayor joining us very soon. And, and, and I think I'm certainly keen to wait a little bit for there, there because I know that actually Argentina has followed quite a, a similar path to Ireland and um, has followed a similar path to Ireland in terms of thinking through very much how it can view libraries as development actors, how it can actually integrate them even more into broader development, uh, in, in, into, into broader sustainable development delivery. I guess one thing I would actually bring up, and I'm going to allow myself to, to share the screen again. Um, oh, I've got to work out which screen it is that I want to share on this one. Um, I'm going to take a second just to find that because I was going to say that one particularly and thank you for the people who are putting notes in the chat right now. Um, that should be okay. Let's, uh, just log in so that I can actually get to it and hopefully I can share that particular screen. I don't think it's going to um, I don't think it's going to allow me to but that's that's fine that's not the end of the world. Um, 
I think there are also opportunities coming up, especially in the context of the work taking place at the UN to look about, look at the, the SDG summit, especially in September, but I think also the summit of the future. Um, and this is coming up in uh, September of next year. And this is very much the, the it's the a key milestone following the UN's 75th anniversary, um, which of course in turn led to the Our Common Agenda, which in turn has led to a series of um, policy briefs, um, which set out potential actions that the UN can take at the level of individual policy areas that should accelerate its ability to deliver on the sustainable development goals. Um, I can see, bienvenue to Matthias. Welcome, Matthias. I can see you, you, you've joined. Voy a dejarle un poco tiempo para para probar, para intentar de encender su cámara. Just going to give you a couple of minutes to make sure that you can turn on your camera. Um, but while we're waiting for Matthias to join, I think there's also, and again, this is a really fantastic example of learning how within the library field to adapt what we're doing and to be more responsive to the frameworks that are offered to us and also because in any case the the, the unique collection of characteristics that we offer in terms of this focus on information this focus on empowering users on fulfilling rights is something that's really is something that's really powerful um matthias puede usted tomar la palabra I think Matthias is still just in the process of setting up right now. I'll give him a couple of seconds, a couple of minutes. So I think just while Matthias is setting up, um, when he starts talking, we'll find a link to the um, we'll find a link to Argentina's voluntary national review from from last year. Um, and this is again, it, it, it's a voluntary review. It's a little bit like the one produced for Ireland this year in that there's actually a conscious effort to focus on, on libraries. And I think similarly to uh, some of the arguments that we make around the, the value of having culture as a goal, that focus on having libraries as an actor is helpful because it makes clear, I know it's not a case of being siloed um, as, as, as some, sometimes it's claimed, by having libraries up there and actually recognize you are both sending a signal to other delivery partners, to other stakeholders in achieving sustainable development that libraries do have this power, that they are, you know, they should be recognized and that they, they should not be thought of in this purely narrow context as purely about access to one aspect of culture or purely about access to certain types of education or research, but should be seen as, as cross-cutting, as having a wide variety of functions. But there's also that really powerful signal that that when librarians that have said and librarians in the world's two and a half million plus libraries see that that's a really powerful signal to them that what they're doing is valued that they should think of themselves as development actors as being proactive as people who can actually really change the world Senor Sotomayor, puede usted escucharme? We may be having a very bad day on technology today. Ah, oh, bien, funciona. Um, eh, ¿Cómo va? ¿Todo bien? Sí, 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 todo está bien. Estamos contentos con bueno. usted estar aquí. Um, yo creo que usted va, va a hablar en español. Voy a hablar en español, sí. Bien, yeah, en, entonces vamos a, uh, vamos a traducir. Entonces, uh, después de... Después de, de, de cada oración, tal vez si, si, puedes, si, si usted puede dejarnos un poco el tiempo para, para traducirlo en inglés. Y tal Perfecto. vez yo voy a preguntar a la, la ayuda de Loida también, porque su español es mejor que el mío. Que el mío. No hay problema. Bien, señor, señor Sotomayor, usted tiene la palabra. Bueno, primero que nada, muchísimas gracias por la espera, muchísimas gracias por, por habernos invitado. Quiero agradecerle también profundamente a Alejandro Santa, quien de alguna manera, en representación de una de las bibliotecas más importantes de la República Argentina, como es la Biblioteca del Congreso de la Nación, tiene un fuerte compromiso con la Agenda 2030. So, he wants to thank, thank everyone for waiting. Thank you for, for, thank you for, for the invitation to join today. And I'd like to extend special thanks to Alejandro Santoa, at the Library of Congress of the Argentinian Nation, 
whose institution who personally has shown a huge engagement with the sustainable development agenda. Bueno, primero, eh, sobre todas las cosas, decir cuál es la importancia que, por ejemplo, Alejandro ha compartido con nosotros sobre el rol que tienen las bibliotecas a la hora de la implementación, el seguimiento de la Agenda 2030. La biblioteca, como un ámbito académico por excelencia, nos ha permitido poder llegar con la Agenda 2030 a los sectores más profundos de la Argentina en este caso. So, through working with Alejandro, it's been possible to get a sense of the, the full depth and the full diversity of the ways in which libraries can actually contribute to sustainable development and to understand this and then make the most of it. Bueno, sabemos que en la República Argentina, a través de la Biblioteca del Congreso, hace poquito estuvimos con el Sistema de Naciones Unidas, con quienes venimos trabajando de forma conjunta, la Biblioteca del Congreso, eh, bueno, seguramente IFLA, y también el Sistema de Naciones Unidas con el Gobierno de la Nación Argentina, trabajando de forma en conjunta para la aplicación, la implementación, como aliados estratégicos a la hora de llevar la Agenda 2030 en este, que es un país federal. And it's been a fantastic example of building up strategic alliance, strategic partnerships between obviously the government of Argentina and the library, but also with the UN system and working together, it's been possible to come up with a way to develop ways of delivering sustainable development, but also fit with Argentina's federal structure that work that obviously has, it brings its own issues of multi-level governance. Este, el año pasado, nuestro país presentó ante el foro político de alto nivel eh, el tercer informe voluntario nacional que data sobre el seguimiento y la implementación de la Agenda 2030 en la Argentina con la participación de todos los ministerios del Estado Nacional. Y cabe destacar que hay un apartado dentro donde hay una colaboración de la Biblioteca del Congreso también como parte de esta red internacional para el desarrollo sostenible que hace tan importante que este libro o que, que acá está impreso pero que nosotros estamos de alguna manera pidiendo que sea de forma digital puede estar en todas las bibliotecas de la Argentina. And so last year Argentina produced its voluntary national review which looks at progress that's been made and the, 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 the efforts that are being made in order to deliver the, to deliver the sustainable development goals. This is a project that involved working across all of the ministries in Argentina, but in particular also with the Library of Congress, given that it is such an important part of international networks focusing on the sustainable development goals. Queremos impulsar, eh, además de decir de que tenemos este libro en conjunto, la cantidad de actividades que venimos desarrollando junto a ISPLA y la Biblioteca del Congreso de la Nación Argentina que preside Alejandro Santa en la Argentina ha sido muy importante, tal, a tal punto que la muestra más importante sobre eh, casi 20 años, casi 30 años de la participación del Sistema de Naciones Unidas en la República Argentina, eh, hay una muestra fotográfica que de alguna manera está haciendo recorrer todo el país en la Biblioteca del Congreso en conjunto con ISPLA. Y es muy importante destacar de que venimos trabajando con Alejandro Santa desde el Consejo Nacional de Coordinación de Políticas Sociales, desde la Presidencia de la Nación Argentina, desde el Sistema de Naciones Unidas, la sociedad civil, las empresas, poder trabajar en que la biblioteca sea un espacio para crear un observatorio o un, un espacio para el seguimiento y la implementación de la Argentina y seguramente poder plantearla a medio término. So, thank you. <laughs> Enjoy the mate. <laughs> this would this would matter. Um, so the, the the report that you've got, which is obviously also available in, in in digital format, was as part of the preparation of this. The 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 Council for the Coordination of Social Policies looked to bring together examples, looked to draw together the wealth of examples of the work that is taking place, and and in particular the level of examples, the richness of the examples that were provided by the library really stood out it was something really powerful but in fact they've also then worked further with the libraries and realizing it's not just a case of reporting what's been done but there's been real potential to work with libraries that they've looked to draw on in order to promote the agenda and so for example there's been a photo exhibition that's been taken around the country working with the library of congress 
in order to promote the SDGs. And now something very exciting, they're working on an observatory of, uh, of progress in delivering on the SDGs. And that's this, this, this observatory is a joint project with the library. El ámbito de la Biblioteca del Congreso de la Nación, que es tan prestigioso en la República Argentina, nos va a permitir poder, poder trabajar con los tres poderes del Estado, el Poder Ejecutivo, el Poder Legislativo y el Poder Judicial, poder trabajar, como decía, con las empresas, con el sector privado, con el sector público, con, con la sociedad civil, con las universidades y con un montón de actores que hacen que hagamos y forjemos una alianza estratégica. Así que estamos muy contentos por el apoyo permanente que nos da IFLA y principalmente, en este caso, eh, quien de alguna manera dirige en la República Argentina este enorme trabajo, también para América Latina, como es Alejandro Santa. Eh, sí. Sí, yo voy a And so actually, the, the, this role of the library makes it possible to do things that might not be possible otherwise. And so in particular, where the library sits makes it possible not only to bring together the different branches of government, and so the legislative, the executive, and the judiciary, but also opens up possibilities to work with businesses, to work with civil society, to work with universities, and to work with other actors who are involved in delivering on the SDGs and actually really start to develop more of a, a strategic approach, a, 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 not just a whole of government, but a whole of society approach to actually achieving the SDGs. And, and he wants to thank again, in particular, the leadership of Alejandro Santo in making this possible. Quiero contarles por qué hablo de esto, porque creo, vuelvo a insistir, en la importancia de las bibliotecas a la hora de poder aplicar la Agenda 2030 por tres conceptos fundamentales. Uno, que es un acceso público, gratuito, universal, que, que parte del origen propio de la creación, del concepto de la creación del conocimiento que permitía una biblioteca. Segundo, porque me parece que le da un grado de seriedad al trabajo que se puede forjar, y principalmente, además de darle un trabajo, o una un carácter serio, nos permite poder mostrarle a la ciudadanía que la Agenda 2030 está al alcance de absolutamente todos y todas, de un obrero, de un trabajador, de un estudiante, de un lector, de un académico, de un empresario, de un científico, de un presidente. Y so, I want to say that three in particular um, aspects, three considerations that make it particularly important that, 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 that really highlight the, the, the role of libraries and that really center the role of libraries. The, the, the first is the, um, is, is, is the fact that libraries provide public and free access to information and that actually this concept of, of information, of knowledge uh, uh, as a basis for so much else, and that of course everyone should have a right to this, to be able to use it is central to the role of libraries and increasingly finally it's being seen as central to the role of society. Um, but then also the role that libraries can play in particular in, in promoting um, acceptance, integration, um, engagement with the 2030 agenda by people in all sorts of all, all, all sort of walks of life or all, with all different possibilities. And so everything from academics to workers to workers of all sorts to students to teachers to citizens, it's something that really makes the 2030 agenda something real. Y el tercer punto? Yo creo que he olvidado algo. No, no, está bien. Okay, está bien, lo, lo que decía fundamentalmente que me parece sumamente destacable que la biblioteca puede permitir esto, justamente llegar a lo máximo de, de la ciudadanía. Puede acceder un niño, una niña, un trabajador, una trabajadora y puede acceder absolutamente un montón de personas de todos los ámbitos de todas las clases sociales, y eso permite que podamos garantizar una verdadera participación en la Agenda 2030. Las bibliotecas pueden hacer eso. Otro ámbito por ahí, el ámbito del gobierno, suele resumirlo en solamente un microclima. Lo empresarial, a solo microclima. Las universidades, a un ámbito académico alto. En cambio, la biblioteca nos permite poder llegar a lo más profundo de toda la ciudadanía y los ciudadanos, y debemos democratizar y llevar esta agenda que nos permite el desarrollo sostenible a cada uno de los puntos 
de nuestros rincones del planeta. And so, just to underline that point, there is the, 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 this universal vocation of libraries, this universal role of libraries is important because other actors within society tend to work within a, a microclimate within sort of much narrower channels, much narrower populations. So government can only work in certain ways with certain people. Businesses can only work in certain ways with certain people. Whereas libraries do have that highly democratic, highly inclusive function that works across society and throughout life. And, and that's something that's really special, that's really powerful and, and brings something very special to the table when we're talking about delivering on the SDGs. Primero, quiero agradecerles y pedirles a todos los que hoy están conectados acá y que son parte de la red IPLA, que nosotros estamos en un momento de transición importante, la Argentina está viviendo un año electoral, que hemos podido avanzar a pesar de la pandemia con Alejandro Santa y con, con muchas personas que conforman la sociedad civil y diferentes organismos del Estado Nacional, hemos podido avanzar mucho sobre la implementación de la Agenda 2030, como decía la, el valor importante que pueda tener la biblioteca en colaborar en el informe voluntario nacional. Dentro de poco vamos a estar lanzando seguramente un resumen sobre la importancia y como decía, vamos a estar organizando con la biblioteca del Congreso justamente el medio término de la Agenda 2030 al cumplirse la mitad de, de esta cuestión y donde va a tener un rol fundamental. Yo les pido a todos ustedes en diferentes partes del mundo que puedan compartir este mensaje, que tengamos, que forjemos y podamos unificar y podamos verdaderamente armar una alianza estratégica, poder encontrarnos y poder, de alguna manera, que somos fanáticos de, esta, de este desarrollo sostenible o de la implementación del desarrollo sostenible, que a través de ustedes podamos llegar a cada uno de los países también. Estamos dispuestos a poder cruzar la frontera en compartir nuestra experiencia y que ustedes también puedan venir a la Argentina las veces que quieran con el corazón abierto, porque yo me imagino que Alejandro también les habrá propuesto eso muchas veces. Acá nos falta el mate nos falta un buen vino y un buen asado argentino, y para los que son veganos, sin duda, tenemos eh, la mejor producción agrícola eh, ganadera del mundo, ¿por qué no? ¿Por qué no de Sudamérica? Sin desprestigiar su, seguramente a nuestros hermanos latinoamericanos. Thank you, so, um, uh, and so uh, this is really actually, it's a call, and, that, and it's a call really to hope that other countries will draw on this potential that are, will actually look to engage lives in the same way and I think within Argentina there's a key turning point potentially we, we have the opportunity to really deepen to accelerate to enhance the way in which we're drawing on libraries right now it's an election year there are lots of questions up in the air about the future clearly we're at the halfway point within the sustainable within the 2030 agenda which obviously we're talking about a lot in New York at the moment and but certainly the path that's been looked to be taken within Argentina is to say, well, we now need to, we've demonstrated with the voluntary national review what libraries are already doing, but now we need to look into the medium term and we need to work with libraries to create a, a strategic alliance, a strategic partnership that is focused on how can we, um, how can we do more? How can we integrate this function further? And, and it's a call to everyone present, to everyone involved here, well, we can do this elsewhere. This obviously Argentina has has fantastic food, has a fantastic agricultural production. So everyone's welcome to come to Argentina and and see how things are see how it's working and then the the choices, the connections that have been made there. But this is also an idea that hopefully can be taken up elsewhere and that we can more systematically around the world integrate libraries effectively into those broader development strategies. Agradecido por esta oportunidad. Los, los invito a través de Alejandro, así que le comunican esto a Alejandro, de que estaría muy bueno que pudiéramos armar con la experiencia que tiene Alejandro, más las experiencias de otros países, ¿por qué no conformar en este medio término, pensando en la cumbre del desarrollo sostenible que va a ser en septiembre? De hecho, quien les habla va a estar representando a la Argentina en el foro político de alto nivel ahora en Nueva York. Estaría muy bueno, ¿por qué no armar buenas prácticas? hablar de lo que hace la Argentina, hablar de lo que hacen sus países, hablar de lo que hacen otras bibliotecas y poder compartir. El compartir y la buena práctica genera lo más importante que tiene esta agenda, que es la alianza estratégica. Pero principalmente es una alianza estratégica forjada para poder pensar lo económico, lo político y lo social, para llegar a cada uno de los ciudadanos de nuestro planeta. 
And so this is something that's only be looking to actually promote because there is, as I said, this really strong experience from the, the council, from Alejandro at the National at the, uh, at the Library of Congress. And there's a desire to, to bring this to the SDG summit in September to highlight these really good practices at a time when the world is asking itself, at a time when member states are asking themselves, what is it that we can do that, what's it that we can do? What is it that we can, can, can improve? How can we change structurally how we're doing this in order to create? And, and, and what we want to create is these sorts of strategic alliances, these strategic, um, strategic possibilities to realize the potential that is there and to really draw on that possibility with libraries to bring together those different aspects of development, the political, the social, the economic, effectively. Muchísimas gracias a todos y todas. Espero verlos pronto. Saben que cuentan con nosotros. Los invito a ingresar también, a seguirnos en nuestras redes sociales, que vean no solamente nuestro trabajo abocado a nuestra Agenda 2030 en la Argentina, sino también que puedan ver nuestro trabajo político, social, eh, para poder trabajar en conjunto. Así que les mando un abrazo para todos y para todas. Muchas, muchas gracias. De so corazón. So the, the, thank you to everyone for being here and for, for providing the opportunity to share some of these great examples from, from Argentina's Voluntary National Review and, and to share it with this community of people who clearly obviously also believe in, in these values. So, I, I might ask L Lloyda, um, quien habla también español, um, if you want to provide any initial reaction or thoughts on this. Lloyda, tiene la palabra. Yes, yes. Encantada también, Matías. Eh, saludos, Argentina. Ya estuve allí cuando IFLA tuvo su congreso en el 2004. Um, uh, Así que eh, he estado um, también en Mar del Plata. Muy encantada de trabajar con todos los colegas. Um, sí, definitivamente. Um, I'm going to speak in, in English, um, my rejection. Um, and the, um, we are all working with, in the same um, areas and with the same goals uh, to impact uh, development and that includes also the economical, political and social aspects of our societies. So that is very important and um, we are working with um, from um, um, here from the states um, in collaboration with many countries um, to train, to, to support uh, training um, librarians and so they can strategize in their countries as well and bring um, libraries into development plans. And so we are all called to do this and to um, strengthen each other and continue these um, initiatives. Um, and through the, um, the ALA task force and the ALA uh, United Nations subcommittee, we are doing that. Um, I wanted to mention there have been um, excellent collaborations in different countries and as an example of what we are doing. Um, uh, for instance, we had um, webinars with um, Germany where we also liaised with uh, France and Australia to basically show the librarians how they can work with stakeholders to strategize for um, you know, developing efforts in their countries. Uh, we also worked with the Philippines in Asia, which is uh, very interesting. Um, we uh, were part of the uh, 30th anniversary of the library association there. And for half a day, um, we had this sort of workshop where different experts explain on how to, um, for instance, work with uh, women empowerment um, and also uh, the services that academic, public and school libraries are providing and how these are impacting directly development. You know, we are all helping uh, people to read and bring in literacy efforts. There are some libraries that are even uh, ending um, eyeglasses. I mean, there are so many different um, um, initiatives and partnerships that make those initiatives possible. Uh, we are, many of us are also involved in the um, library advocacy, meeting with the local politicians and see how we can impact policy. So we brought all those different topics to this workshop in the Philippines, invited by them. And um, we also individually, um, the people that are in this uh, committees from the ALA UN um, committees um, have 
collaborated with different colleagues in different regions of the world. Here I am today, I'm happy to be with you all. I wanted to mention that there are, um, that we have another event during these days of the High Level Political Forum. And um, the next event is on July 18. And um, we can share, I guess, information um, with the uh, those that are attending here today live. But the information has gone out with the hashtag um, of IFLA, AL, American Library Association, in the um, HL High Level Political Forum, HLPF 2023. You can um, search using that hashtag on Twitter. And the theme of July 18 is women empowerment and how uh, libraries are empowering and supporting women in communities and also at policy level. As we know, we don't have yet, sadly, a country in the world that has achieved gender equality. And so that is very important to all of us. And um, we are going to present um, about that. And we have the American Library Association uh, current president and other experts from different areas to show how libraries are empowering women in the uh, copyright and legal matters area, in the IT and artificial intelligence area, uh, also uh, at public public libraries, how they are doing that with communities and academic libraries, how they're doing that in the areas of research and discovery. And um, we know there is there are different um, kind of stakeholders in those libraries. And uh, we hope to also present uh, the view of school libraries. And, um, and I will bring the view of the, you know, a national level kind of like a big scope in terms of policy as well. So uh, we hope to see you there is July 8 at 11 um, a.m. Um, New York time. So um, also I wanted to mention that, um, the, that our colleague here, Matthias, mentioned something very important about uh, how libraries are providing, you know, access, uh, free access to the public. And that is very important. It's part of one of our course as, a, as a, I will say even the profession um, and recently there are some movements around the world in different countries uh, not really too um, big movements but they are a little bit loud and they are um, kind of getting into the free access to information that everyone should have and so libraries are there we are um, supporting everyone's access to information. And we are um, also supporting the freedom to read that everybody has rather than banning books. And so those are um, areas that are um, a little bit tough at the moment in different countries and also in the United States. And we are very appreciative about the support for libraries that we see um, at the UN level and also at a federal level and also with our colleagues that um, are supporting us and we're supporting them because we are in connection and that type of unity and togetherness is very important that we um, have it in our in our profession our industry but also that we share that with um, elected officials and stakeholders um, the last thing i want to mention related to that is that um i was at the un last week for another event where i was speaking and um got talking to a person representing uh the government and and the un relations and um this person knew about uh, the situation with access to information and freedom to read that is happening around the world. And he was so supportive. So it was great to see that at the UN uh, managers level, there is that type of support and the awareness they have. It means that they, uh, the libraries around them have done a good job uh, keeping them aware. I would say them, maybe they're using uh, social media, maybe they're using different uh, methods and strategies, but that's part of what we have to do in terms of also even partnership right to keep the the public and and different stakeholders aware of what we do and also also our challenges because that's the way they can support libraries as well and we are all in this together and unfortunately experiencing the same thing at different levels around the world
So thank you. I think that's also a really powerful way to close. I'm conscious we're slightly over time. We did start late, but I'm conscious that people will have other commitments, including to go to the UN itself for the start of the sessions. Um, so I, I'm conscious, Allah, that, that Matthias already had to go, but I want to thank even in his absence, in Niall's absence, um, both of them for their participation. I think there's something powerful as well that we can see in, in, in countries that are, are so far apart that have such different contexts. We are seeing nonetheless this quite sort of this, this, this effort, this movement towards this integration of libraries effectively into um, uh, integration of libraries into planning. And, and it's not just about reporting increasingly, it's moving upstream. So into the development of policy, into the effort to think about policy that libraries actually feature in that way. So I think clearly that's two examples. We'd love to see 196. So I think that's our mission. And that's not even to talk about the work that's taking place at regional level and local level, which is a really strong feature this year's high level political forum as well. So plenty of work to do. But I think what, what's helpful is that we've seen it, it, it is possible. It can be done. So there's no excuse not to do it. There's no excuse not to act now in order to make sure that by 2030 we can point to all those examples and that the potential of libraries to support development is realised everywhere. So with that, thank you to Niall, thank you to Matthias, and in particular, thank you to Lloyda for, for all your support and help with making this webinar work. Um, we will be putting up the recording as quickly as possible. That will be on the IFLA YouTube channel. Um, so take a look at our YouTube channel, it's IFLA HQ. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for your time and I wish you a very good rest of the day. Thank you very much. Bye.